This video is sponsored by Altium. In this video, we will discuss our final image annotation tool, Make Sense. It is a simple web-based tool that provides annotation in two formats, Pascal VOC and Coco. Now let's begin with the data annotation process using the Make Sense tool. So to open the website, you simply need to type the URL, makesense.ai, and press enter. Here the website will open. And from the website, you need to go to the bottom right corner and click Get Started. From there, a window will open saying Drop Images or click here to select them. Click on that window and select all the images you want to annotate. After that, click on Object Detection. Next, a window would open saying Create Labels. Just click on the plus icon and say Face, because our label is the human face. And click on Start Project. Here, the main tool would open. And here you can see we have five images. We will select our first image and go to the right side of this browser. And there you can see it has five shapes. Rectangle, point, line, and finally the polygon. We are going to use the polygon tool and we are going to annotate the human face. Just zoom in a bit and the same process. Point at one position, left click, point at another position, left click. So you're going to go like this and try to annotate this human face. Just click on the first point. Now this is complete. Now go to the right side and select Label, then click on Face. So your first image annotation is done. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Let's move to the second image. Again, the same procedure. Point and left click, point and left click. Just click on the first point and it is done. So as you can see, our label face is automatically selected. Let's move to the third image. The third image is also done. Let's move to the fourth image. This image is also done. Now we are left with that fifth image. Let's work on that as well. So we are done with annotations of all five images. Now we need to export it in a JSON file. So we're going to click on Actions, and we're going to click on Export Annotations. And here we will select Single File Coco JSON Format, and click on Export. Our JSON file is now downloaded, so let's go into the Downloads folder. There you can see our file. Let's rename it first to mask.json. Let's cut and paste it into the code section. Now we're going to open it in a text editor. So this is the JSON file. Let's copy its data and visualize it in the JSON viewer. So you can see here we have four values. First is this info, just describing your project name. The second is images, which contains five keys for each image. And inside each key we have ID, width, height, and file name. From there, we need width, height, and the file name. And after that, we have the annotations key. Inside it, we also have five sub keys, each representing the annotation data for each image. So here we have ID, IS crowd, image ID, and category ID. But our main thing is the segmentation key. Inside it, we have our coordinate point as a floating point value. 
Here, the sequence is the same as the previous one. First, we have an x, then y, then x, then y. And here, we also have b box for coordinate points. Let's move on to the fourth key, which is categories. We can see id, one, name, face. We don't need this. Our main task is this image and its annotation. Now we're going to write some code and try to process these images and their annotation coordinate points into proper images and masks. First of all, we are going to import the NumPy library. Again, NumPy is used for performing mathematical operations on arrays. And here we are reading images. And on those images, we are going to perform some NumPy operations. Secondly, we are going to import CV2, which stands for OpenCV, and we will use it to read and save our masks. The third is JSON. We will use the JSON module to read the data from the JSON file. Here, our first task would be executing the cell and reading the JSON data. We're going to say f equals open. So first of all, we will read it as a simple text file, mask.json. Let's check its name. It's mask.json. Now we're going to say r and read it as a simple text file. Next, we'll load the JSON data, saying json.load f. Now let's print the data. So we can see we have the complete data in our notebook. Now we're going to set some path for our mask folder. So we're going to say mask. This mask folder would contain our mask. Let's create the folder here. So this folder would save the mask. Now let's extract this images value, which is the value inside these annotations. We're going to say images, the name of the variable containing information, data, images. Next, we'll say annotes equals data. And here we'll say annotations. Let's add one more cell here below and we'll print the images to see what kind of info we have here. We can see we have a list of images, each containing an image ID, width, height, and file name for the five images. Now let's do the same for the annotations. You can see inside annotations we have segmentation and we have bbox. We have everything which we require. Now we are going to loop over these images annotation. So we're going to type for x, comma, y in zip images, comma, annotes. So first of all, we'll print what is x here. So we see x is a dictionary containing width, height, and file name. So let us extract the file name first, then height and width. Next, we're going to extract the height. So we're going to type x height. So we have the file name, its height, and its width. Now we're going to initialize a blank mask. We're going to type mask equals np.zeros. That is by height and width. Now let's save this mask and see if our code is working properly or not. We're going to use the fstring method and give it a path. We're going to type mask dir and a slash. Just remember that Linux and Windows conflict about the slash. For Windows, we're going to use these double slashes and then type file name. And this part is now complete. We're going to type mask. It's executed without any error. Let's go into our mask folder. So we can see we have blank images. If I show you the shape of each image, it is 768 by 512. Now we are going to write information on these blank masks. We're going to type seg equals y segmentation and four points in seg. Now we're going to have an empty list and we're going to name it contours. Now let's print the points. So we can see each is a floating point value. So it begins with the x-axis, then the y-axis. Now we will loop over this list and properly append all x-axis and y-axis in this empty list. We're going to type 4i in range, which will begin with zero and end with a length of points. And it would increment by a factor of two. Let's print i and execute it. So it begins with zero, then two, then four, then six, and then eight. Now we will use these numbers to our advantage and append the information from the point into our contour. So we're going to type points, extract information at the index i. Index i is first of all zero, 
that is an x, then i plus 1. 0 plus 1 would be 1. Like this, it's going to extract x and y. In the same way, in the second iteration, it's going to become 2. So it's going to extract the x-axis from the index portion 2 and then the third. Like this, the contour will have all the x's and y's. Now we're going to convert this contour into a NumPy array, and we're going to change the data type to integer 32. Now our contour is a NumPy array with a data type of integer 32. We will use the OpenCV draw contour function upon it and add the mask information to our blank mask. We will type cv2.drawContours. First, we'll give it a blank mask on which we want to embed our coordinate point. So inside this list, we're going to type contours, then minus one. And then we're going to give it the pixel value. And here we want the pixel value of 255, and 255 represents the white color. The next one is the width. Now let's save this image, and we're going to run the cell. Here we have five masks and you can see a border image of those masks. Now our task is to fill this image, this contour, with white color, so we can get a proper binary mask. Let's do this by changing the thickness from one to minus one and rerunning the cell. Now this time we have a proper black and white image. Here we have the black region indicating the background and then the white region indicating the foreground class. So this way, you're going to use the Make Sense tool to annotate your image and process them using this Python code.